Imagine a child, not more than 10, with a chilling gaze that could make the bravest souls quake. This is the story of a boy unlike any other. His name? We'll withhold for now, but suffice it to say, his moniker has become synonymous with the term evil. From a young age, he exuded an uneasiness that rattled the bones of those who crossed his path, an ominous cloud seemingly hanging over his small frame. Born into an ordinary family, in an ordinary neighborhood, he was, by all appearances, just another child. But appearances can be deceiving. His was a childhood marred by a distinct lack of warmth, an absence of the usual innocence that characterizes the young. His eyes, they say, held a chilling gaze, a frosty stare that could make the bravest souls quake. His unsettling behavior began to manifest early on. There were whispers of strange incidents, instances that hinted at something darker lurking beneath the surface. Like the time he disappeared for hours, only to return with a cruel smirk playing on his lips, refusing to divulge where he'd been. Or the time he was found alone in the woods, surrounded by an eerie silence, seemingly communicating with the unseen. There were instances of cruelty too, instances that shook those who witnessed them. The neighborhood pets started to disappear one by one, and when they were found, the sight was so gruesome it left the adults speechless. As he grew older, the unsettling behavior escalated, his actions becoming increasingly alarming. Schoolyard fights, instances of bullying, and a growing disregard for authority marked his early years. His parents, initially dismissive of these incidents as mere child's play, soon found themselves grappling with a chilling realization. Their son was different, deeply so, and not in a way they could ever have anticipated. But this was just the beginning of the chilling tale of the most evil kid in the world. As the years passed, the kid's chilling demeanor intensified, and so did his actions. It started subtly, with small manipulations. He'd twist words, manipulate situations, and pull strings like a master puppeteer. His peers became mere pawns in a game of chess he was playing with life. His teachers, too, were not immune to this. He'd weave intricate webs of deceit, turning them against each other, and all the while, he'd sit back and watch the chaos unfold with a smirk etched on his face. His cunning was not limited to psychological games. His physical actions became increasingly alarming. From petty theft to violent outbursts, his actions were a clear display of his disregard for authority. The local authorities were often at his doorstep, but his silver tongue and feigned innocence always managed to save him from the consequences of his actions. The boy's audacity knew no bounds. He'd openly challenge his teachers, defy his parents, and scoff at any form of discipline or rules. He was a law unto himself, and anyone who dared to oppose him would face his wrath. Then came the incidents that marked his transition into his teenage years. He was just 13 when he orchestrated a dangerous prank that resulted in serious injuries to a fellow student. When confronted, he showed no remorse, no guilt. Instead, he reveled in the fear he had instilled in his victims. His teenage years were marked by a series of escalating incidents, each more chilling than the last. He'd manipulate, cheat, and lie with such ease that it was hard to believe he was just a child. His victims were left traumatized, their minds scarred by his actions and their hearts filled with fear. The kid was no longer just a troublemaker, he was a terror, a force to be reckoned with. His chilling demeanor and ruthless actions had turned him into a figure of dread. The fear that once was a murmur had now grown into a deafening roar, one that echoed in the hearts of anyone who crossed his path. In the midst of the terror, the truth began to unravel. As the community recoiled in shock and horror, the investigative gears were already turning, unearthing a chilling reality that was almost too grotesque to believe. The kid, who was once perceived as a bundle of youthful energy, was revealed to have a darker, more sinister side, one that was capable of inflicting harm beyond comprehension. The investigation began to expose a series of calculated actions, each one more horrifying than the last. It was as though the kid had been living a double life, hiding behind an innocent facade while orchestrating a reign of terror. Detectives tirelessly pieced together the puzzle, their determination fueled by the urgency to bring justice to the victims. They delved into the kid's past, examining every interaction, every incident, every seemingly innocent act. They soon discovered a pattern of manipulative behavior, a kind of deceit that was chilling in its sophistication. As the community grappled with the revelations, they were forced to confront a reality that was almost impossible to comprehend. The kid who they had known and interacted with was capable of such evil. It was a shocking blow, a betrayal that shattered the tranquility of their lives. 
Parents held their children a little tighter, their hearts heavy with the weight of what had transpired. The playgrounds fell silent, the laughter replaced with a deafening silence that echoed the community's collective sorrow. Conversations were hushed, the topic too horrifying to discuss openly, yet impossible to ignore. The kids' actions, once shrouded in mystery, were now laid bare for all to see. The community was left reeling, struggling to come to terms with the enormity of the evil that had been hiding in plain sight. The innocence of their town was forever tarnished, replaced with a sense of unease that would linger for years to come. The mask had fallen, revealing a face of pure evil that no one could have anticipated. The once cheerful kid was now a symbol of terror, a grim reminder of the darkness that can lurk beneath the surface. As the community reeled from the shock, the law stepped in, leading to a confrontation no one would ever forget. The courthouse was a fortress of stern faces and hushed whispers. In the heart of this fortress, the most evil kid in the world sat, unflinching and silent. The weight of the room focused solely on this child, the eye of a storm of fear and disbelief. The trial began with a chilling recount of the horrors left in the kid's wake. The prosecutor, a seasoned and steely veteran, spoke with a voice that echoed the community's pain. Each fact, each piece of evidence, was a shard of glass piercing the silence of the courtroom. Yet the child remained unmoved, an unsettling calm in a sea of turmoil. As the days turned into weeks, the tension within the courtroom grew. The defense did their best to humanize the child, to paint a picture of a lost soul, corrupted by circumstance. But the stone-cold gaze of the kid, seemingly indifferent to the gravity of the situation, made their task an uphill battle. The drama of the trial wasn't confined to the courtroom. Outside, the media circus was in full swing, the kid's face plastered on every screen, every headline. The world watched captivated and horrified, a collective gasp held in the balance. And then, the moment of truth. The jury returned, a dozen faces etched with the burden of their decision. The room fell silent, the air thick with anticipation. The judge, a weary figure of authority, asked for the verdict. The four persons stood, a single piece of paper clutched in their hand, the fate of the most evil kid in the world resting on the words inked onto its surface. The verdict was in and the world held its breath. In the wake of the trial, the world was left to grapple with the chilling reality of the most evil kid. The gavel had fallen, the verdict delivered, but the echoes of this terrifying saga reverberated far beyond the courtroom walls. The community, once a placid haven, was now a scarred landscape, grappling with the monstrous actions of one of its youngest members. Parents hugged their children tighter, neighbors viewed each other with suspicion, and trust, once given freely, was now a commodity as rare as peace of mind. This case, however, was not just a local tragedy, it became a cautionary tale with far-reaching implications. It raised uncomfortable questions about the nature of evil, about innocence lost, and about our collective responsibility in raising our young ones. The kid's legacy was one of fear, yes, but it was also one of introspection. It forced us to confront the uncomfortable truth that sometimes, the monsters we fear do not lurk under the bed or in the closet. Sometimes, they sit at our dining tables, laugh at our jokes and go to school with our children. But out of the ashes of this harrowing ordeal, valuable lessons emerged. It became a stark reminder of the importance of mental health in children, of the need for early detection of antisocial behavior, and of the crucial role of community in shaping a child's future. The trial served as a wake-up call, prompting schools, parents, and communities to be more vigilant, to listen more intently to our children, and to take their concerns seriously. It underscored the necessity of fostering an environment where children feel seen, heard, and understood. And so ends the tale of The Most Evil Kid, a chilling reminder that monsters can come in the most unexpected forms. It's a story that shook us to our core, but one that we must remember, if we are to prevent such a nightmare from unfolding in our midst once more.